Hello, great to see you today. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Suzanne. Hi, Nico, Charlie, Alexis, what's what's up? Oh man, this is a big day for us. We are we are so pumped for this movie to come out. Next goal wins November 17th. Right off the bat, I just want to ask you how weird was it to have a movie made after you? Like in your wildest dreams, did you ever think that you would be the subject of a Hollywood film? Never. Although, you know, all of us, it probably including you, Suzanne, um, you know, where you get an answer to a question, who should play me in a movie? So this is like a real badass moment for me, you know? It's, well, it's, Oscar and Golden Globe nominee, super villain Matt Nito, Stelio, Steve Jobs, Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, it's Michael Evan Bastard. <laughs> How's the, how is your day going? I had the same reaction. I will tell you, full stop. Um, I used to have my my Hollywood crush was was Michael Fassbender. Um, really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Suzanne. Oh, I'm so, Inglorious <laughs> Bastards. Are you kidding me? What? This is a. I mean, this was a, a top choice. So so when you found out that it was going to be Michael Fassbender, as you mentioned, Golden Globe winner, he's been nominated for Academy Awards. This guy was going to be portraying you on the big screen. Were you kind of like puffing your chest a little bit? Like, mm-hmm, yep, I agree with this. Great choice. I, I, I was. And I got to backtrack a little bit to 2014 when the original documentary came out at the Tribeca Film Festival. And I'm sitting next to The Rock. The Rock is from American Samoa. He was promoting the movie. And next to me on the other side is a smaller gentleman. And after the movie, everybody's going nuts. Rock high fives me, the guy next to me, which I still don't know his name, introduced himself, I'm going to turn this into a movie. So fast forward to 2017, I get a call. You remember, my name is Ty Guy Wartizi. I just finished uh, doing Thor for Disney, which grossed like a billion dollars. But I want to go back to my roots. And I told you I was going to turn this into a movie. But, he says, my best friend, and Ty Guy Wartizi is from New Zealand, is um, is a famous actor that unfortunately is uh, is overweight. So that's that's Crow. Instead of you know Crow playing you, it's going to be Michael Fassbender. And I knew Michael Fassbender from Magneto, Inglorious Bastards, uh, a nominee for an Oscar for Steve Jobs, Steve McQueen. Uh, the list goes on of roles that he's played. The only thing that I took away because that's what Tiger with TV said, he's never done a a comedy, because this is a comedy drama, uh, this movie that is coming out next to which you said in November 17th. And I'm telling you, he plays me to a T, and he's much better looking. I, I got dates <laughs> this already. So it's, yeah, it's all good. Now, Thomas, this obviously, this is exciting. Next Goal wins. It's about you taking on a difficult project in being the coach of American Samoa. But that wasn't your first difficult project. You coached Charlie Davies. Uh, <laughs> what was that like? Are there any stories you could tell us about what that might have been like? That was actually easy and, and hard. Um, Charlie and I went to probably two camps, a trip. Uh, to the Mill Cup, which we which we won, um, I had two at that time, you know, pretty exceptional players uh, on that team. One was Arturo Alvarez, and one was Charlie Davies. And Charlie carved out literally 20 plus chances throughout that tournament. Didn't finish uh, most of them, quite frankly, <laughs> but he had this unique ability to get himself in very good spots. And, and and we know we talk about Charlie's speed, but he had a lot more than just speed, an innate ability around the 18-yard box. Like one of my former players at that time leading goal scorer in World Cup history, Gerd Mueller. Now, Gerd wasn't as fast as, as Charlie, but he had a, he called that finger spitzen gefühl, which means <laughs> through instinct, you know, finding ways to get himself in great position. And that was Charlie, and he just needed to hone his finishing abilities. And I saw Charlie actually at a tournament, I think somewhere in Massachusetts, where there was hundreds of teams uh, watching my steps on. 
and I walk to one field, and there's Charlie Davis running riots, basically. So based on that performance for his youth club, I brought him to the under 20s. All the words of encouragement that you gave me as, as a youth player, you know, I, I just remember wanting more and being, I wanted to be pushed. And I knew you had, you know, professional experience. You played as a professional, you coached as a professional. And I knew you giving me that confidence to say, hey, you can play in Europe and, and you got to go test yourself. That, um, that went a long way for me. So uh, thank you. Um, I'm curious, when you took over this American Samoa team, what were the, aside from the obvious challenges, what were some of the challenges that you didn't anticipate that you were able to navigate to be able to get this team to compete? Um, I think, and, and that's where I learned actually and taught myself, uh, one thing that I was lacking during my coaching career, although I, I was able to reach out to players, but not on a emotional intelligence. If I had emotional intelligence or knew emotional intelligence better during my coaching career, I think I would have had more success. I was driven by fear of failure. Uh, you know, you, you, you get tunnel vision. Um, and, and after a while, as I said again, uh, my emotional intelligence allowed me instinctually to do most things right when I went to America and Samoa. And I knew I, I ran into a team that's the worst team in the world, ranked last in FIFA. I knew they had the dubious, <laughs> unfortunate, that they lost 31 to nothing in a World Cup qualifying game against Australia, which was the worst defeat in the history of soccer. Not scored a goal in uh, 20 years. And that they had a Fafa Fina, which is a transgender, uh, on their team as well, uh, by the name of Johnny Salua. But uh, I found out very quickly that the team referred to her as, as, as Jaya. So one of my first things was, I'm walking towards her with, my, with her passport, and I said, Jaya, uh, you want me to call you Jaya or Johnny? And the team is there, and this is the second day. Um, and she says, Coach, if you can call me Jaya, that would be great. I said, you'll be Jaya from now on. The captain says, oh my God, this is the first Palangi. And Palangi in, in Polynesian or in Samoan means white man. He's the, you're the first white man who's accepting Jaya, who we accept in our society. Uh, so that was, that was huge for me. Uh, another thing which the Dutch do, we travel, we travel well. I love different languages, I speak five. Uh, fluently. Um, I'd never been to that part of the world, so I did some research. Uh, I'm a atheist, but I went to church with them from, from day one. I sang with them. I finally, and if it wasn't for the American Samoa experience, my personal journey there, I, I probably would have been uh, dead, quite frankly. Um, and my wife did hospitalize me once because I was trying to take my uh, my life after I'd lost my, my stepdaughter in a, in a single car accident. But for the first time, I was able to let go and, and, and cry. And that was, that was important for me. And as I said again, uh, in the four components of football, technically, I could have made him a little bit better. Tactically, yes, I, I, I tweaked some things. But I'd seen that they couldn't play 90 minutes, so they weren't very fit. I knew in three weeks I could help there, but more so the mental side. And how do I turn a losing team into a winning team? And the day of the game against Tonga, a first qualifying game to go to Brazil, I looked in their faces when I announced the starting 11. And as Charlie knows, my rah-rah speeches uh, are, are pretty good. They're legendary. And I I said to my wife, actually, I think they believe they can win. So that was a, a, a incredible journey of doing a lot of different team building exercises to get to that point where they firmly believed. And here we go. We win 2-1, uh, a first win, as I said again, in 20 years uh, with the first transgender uh, to play an official men's World Cup qualifying game. So. Um, I worked on the mental side more than, than anything else.
Thomas, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Can't wait to see the film. Go see it. You'll enjoy it. I have no doubt we will. Thank you so much.